so we're going to get started. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jamie Garcia. I'm with the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition. This press conference was organized by the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition, Los Angeles Community Action Network, and Black Lives Matters of Los Angeles. You should have with you a press packet. Inside the press packet, you will find a list of speakers, media advisory, a timeline of LAPD's domestic, sexual, and child abuse. You'll also see this timeline up here as well, and a one-pager that lists various complaints against LAPD, including domestic violence, gender bias, and um, sexual misconduct from the years of 2012 to 2014. <clears throat> so today we are present to express our grave concerns regarding the Los Angeles Police Department's cadet program. LAPD officer Robert Kane was charged with the sexual assault of a 15 year old. Officer Kane was also found to be stockpiling weapons in his home. There were also indications that Kane was found to be facilitating the cadet's use of police equipment. Kane's actions are not isolated incidences, but a moment in time of um, the continuation of LAPD's predatory history. The targets of this abuse are often varied, including family members, intimate partners, members of community, and youth involved in LAPD programs. There is also a pattern of verbally diminishing the seriousness of rape and abuse. Deputy Chief Daryl Gates described sexual relationships between six officers and 16 teenage cadets as, I quote, no rape, no seduction, there was a lot of agreement. In 2017, Chief Charlie Beck continues this pattern that accusations of rape between Officer Robert King and a 15-year-old youth cadet to appear, I quote, as all consensual in that there was no force, fear, or intimidation used. Many of these incidents of abuse go unreported without a thorough and independent investigation. So we are here today to demand that Chief Beck be fired. This again is a demonstration of his failed leadership. We're also demanding that the cadet program be dismantled. And we're also demanding that a thorough investigation of the LAPD cadet program independent of LAPD and the Board of Police Commissioners occur. We are also stating that reparations be made to families that have been harmed and lastly, we are calling on the mayor to be accountable for these heinous acts and he should immediately take action on our demands and divest from LAPD and invest in youth programs independent of LAPD. We will also be filing a formal complaint to the state attorney general and we are also calling on a special prosecutor to be investigating these issues. So today our first speaker will be Trudy Goodwin of the Los Angeles Community Action Network. Um, good morning. I'm, I want to start off with a quote by our police chief. All consensual and that there is no force or intimidation used. That is a direct quote from Beck who feels that he represents the very people who are here to protect and serve us. He's talking about the physical attack on a 15 year old by one of his officers. I say that this is not the type of leadership I feel comfortable with being a grandmother of a 15 year old girl. I never want to think that if she was attacked that a police officer would find it within policy to um, to do this to attack her and get away with it on a daily basis i work with women on skid row many of these women most of these women have endured sexual assault um, abuse and beatings they're running from violence and what we understand now is that many of them are running directly into harm's way anytime they encounter police because the police officers are also assaulting these women. We have a volunteer that comes in our office on a weekly basis who, who has said time and time again, in this police and the police division, at the, uh, to the police department that a police officer had approached her and asked her if she wanted him 
to probe her with his tool. Now, this is not the type of folks that we expect to protect and to serve our women and our girls. So, of course, we are asking for the immediate resignation of Charlie Beck. We want an independent investigation of this crime against this young woman in the cadets. We want that money taken from the cadets and placed into an organization that actually is here to serve you. Um, that's it for now. Thank you, sir. Fire Chief Beck! 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 Next we have Tiffany Guetta from the Stop LAPD Spine Coalition. with Stop LAPD Spying Corporation. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the timeline of LAPD's incidents of child domestic violence and sexual abuse. It starts back in the 1960s when the LAPD's Youth Explorer program was established, then goes through the 1990s when the department was investigated for how it handled cases of domestic violence committed by officers. Through 2009 when the Explore program became the cadet program and up to present day when Officer Robert Kane sexually assaulted at least one cadet. And what we see is a persistent and destructive pattern of abuse. We see officers preying not only on trainees and cadets but on other folks that officers came into contact with, including members of their own families and folks that they met on patrol. Examples include Detective Dennis Dare, who investigated sexual assault cases for the LAPD, but who engaged in the sexual abuse of his own teenage relatives. And Officer Russell Meccano, who would threaten and assault teenage girls he met while on patrol. We see officers using their badges, their access to spaces, their weapons, including guns, handcuffs, and their police cars to threaten, assault, and entrap. We see women being threatened with arrest or jail, and with kids, the threat is that they will be harmed or that they might be kicked out of a training program if they report what is happening. Which takes us to another theme that we see, and that is of minimization and erasure. From the start of the timeline, we see Deputy Chief Gates refer to the rape of young teenagers by LAPD officers not as rape, but as a lot of agreement. In the 1990s, following reports of hundreds of cases of domestic violence being committed by LAPD officers, the president of the police commission then, Edith Perez, said, we're talking about a handful of officers. And historically, when officers have committed domestic violence, in more than 75% of the cases, the incident was minimized on an officer's performance evaluation or not mentioned at all. And why do we care about all of that, what has happened in the past or in the last few decades? The reason we care is because when that erasure happens and a refusal to acknowledge those cycles of violence, that means that the violence has continued, which is how we can be standing here today with all this evidence of child abuse and domestic abuse stretching back for decades with a cadet program developed entirely under Charlie Beck that has no rules in place forbidding officers from being alone with cadets or minors. The arrogance of Charlie Beck that he thinks he can ignore this abuse and not learn from the past and that by making small changes to the cadet manual policies that he will change these systems of abuse that we see even outside the program. We demand that Charlie Beck be fired. His impulse to defend Officer Robert Kane and to minimize his, beha his behavior tells us exactly which side he stands on. We demand an end to the cadet program. The communities need youth programs, yes, but not those run by the LAPD and their officers. And we demand reparations. We want acknowledgement by the city of the harm that has been caused by its officers. That means opening the files and conducting investigations that are independent and not tied to the Inspector General or the Police Commission. Next we have Gloria Gonzalez from the Youth Justice Coalition. Gloria Gonzalez and I'm a youth organizer with the Youth Justice Coalition and I just wanted to start off by saying a quote in 2005 that Lieutenant Paul Vernon stated, these kinds of incidents can happen in any organization and anything dedicated to children, youth sports and church
churches. So since 2005, the lieutenant had already said that this was okay, that the fact that children can be molested or raped within the LAPD, that that was okay. And that is not true. As a youth that lives in South Central, we need to really have a youth development department and invest into youth and not into programs that have to do with um, working with LAPD. Um, I don't think that in the Spanish community, we're aware that there has been this molestation and um, I don't think that there has been this molestation. I don't think that they know that, there ha that this has happened and they need to be informed, the parents need to be informed of this timeline that Stop LAPD Spying and Black Lives Matter have created because it does show how there has been um, there has been a series of events that have occurred and the officers haven't been charged or they have been delayed they have been uh they have taken administrative leave and they still have been on pay so i just want to acknowledge that if lapd is here to protect and serve how come they can't protect and serve their youth instead they're um they're molesting them and they have not really been arrested or they haven't been going to jail thank you Last, we have Mia Amina Minor from Black Lives Matter, Los Angeles. Hello, my name is Mia Amina Minor. I'm a member of Black Lives Matter, Los Angeles. And we're here to expose the police culture of state sanctioned violence, predatory behavior, and sexual abuse that is allowed to exist within LAPD and its youth programs. Let us be clear, this is not an isolated event. It is a part of a long history and pattern of LAPD officers misusing their authority, abusing power, and using excessive force to dominate, intimidate, manipulate, assault, rape, and even kill those seen as more vulnerable. Within this police culture, there is a pattern of verbally diminishing the seriousness of rape and abuse. And often, too often, leadership, specifically chiefs of police, fail to protect victims. Again, I want to repeat this quote because in 1976, then Deputy Chief Daryl Gates described the sexual relationships between six officers and 16 teenage cadets as, quote, no rape, no seduction, there was a lot of agreement, end quote. In 2017, Chief Charlie Beck continues this pattern with remarks that accusations of rape between Kane and a 15-year-old cadet appear to have been, quote, all consensual in that there was no force, fear, or intimidation used, end quote. However, we know one must be 18 to even give consent. Despite the history of sexual abuse and predatory behavior within LAPD and its youth programs, Beck continues to protect his officers and not the victims. By minimizing the transgressions and dismissing the seriousness of these incidents, he, like Daryl Gates, is breeding a culture where violence and abuse is allowed to occur. Our demands, fire Chief Beck for leading the most corrupt and murderous and predatory police force in the nation and continuing to allow police officers to misuse their authority, abuse their power and use excessive force. Stop the cadet program. LAPD must defund the cadet program and publicly acknowledge and take ownership of its history. Mayor Garcetti is to reassign funds from LAPD youth programs to youth programs not operated by LAPD. A thorough and independent investigation of predatory behavior and sexual violence within the cadet program and LAPD. This needs to be completed by a body outside of the Los Angeles Police Department and outside of the Los Angeles Police Commission because police and police related entities cannot investigate police. Right to reparations. Reparations must be made to the families of those who have been harmed. Let us not forget that on this day in the police commission, we will hear the cases of two teenagers, Jesse Romero and Kenny Watkins, who were shot and killed by the police last year. In Minneapolis, a chief of police will resign after a white woman is shot and killed. But in LA, we are still waiting for the mayor to respond to the continuous pleas from the community to take stronger action against LAPD and against our chief of police. We are here as a coalition of community members doing nothing more than asking for justice for the families of those who have been harmed. And we are here to hold LAPD accountable. Thank you. Fire Chief Beck! 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 Immediately! Fire Chief Beck!